Welcome to another episode of the Belly It Up podcast, everybody. I'm here with Charlie. Hey, folks. My name is Charlie Barons, and I am the co-host here on the Belly It Up podcast. It's an honor to be here. We are at and- Mick's office here in Moorhead, Minnesota again. Charlie, there's a lot of writing on the wall. A lot of writings <laughs> on the wall. I guess the writing's on the wall here. I guess the writing is on the wall. There's writing on the bar top. Miles, remember that one time we were at that one bar in St. Paul, Minnesota, when every dollar had some written on it, and we played a game where you had to organically integrate should something. Should we do that should, again? I think we should do it. Okay. I think we should do it. Let's so let me while you're looking, I'll explain the game to the audience who may not have seen that. So So I have to pick something for you? You pick something that you have to organically weave in. But I pick something for you though, and you pick one. Yeah, for yeah, me. yeah, 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 yeah. And and uh so basically you pick a word that the other person has to organically integrate into a caller. Can we pick symbols? Because if we can, I want to pick the dong right there. <laughs> no. Okay. Um mm. Oh, this. Thing. Okay, I got yours. Okay, all right. I got a good one. So, <clears throat> basically, what did you explain it that we're gonna pick a phrase and then we have to sometime throughout the episode work in to it that phrase. And what happens if we don't, Charlie? Is this a bet? Yeah, if you don't, you. <laughs> if you don't, you gotta you, pick up the tab. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. I found yours, Miles. <laughs> I found yours. Okay, what is it, Charlie? You gotta come down here and read it. Where? Right here. This one? Nope. <laughs> it says <laughs> cock sandwich. I mean, which could be a chicken sandwich if you think about it. So I don't know why. I I'm gotta work this. in cock sandwich. <laughs> what do I have to work in? You have to work in this right here. Uh, your mama's balls. <laughs> all right. All right. So I'm doing your mama's balls. And, and I have cock sandwich. Okay. And we have the whole episode to get these in. Otherwise, someone's picking up the tab. I, there was no a couple cheating. other ones that were actually good one-liners, but were it they? was going to be too easy for you. I almost yeah. went with I have a hard time making friends. Oh, yeah. And I almost went with five bucks is five bucks. Which oh, that's, been good. that's a great that that's a hat right there. Yeah. Five bucks is five bucks. All right. Your All right. mama's balls. Let's do it. Let's get into the episode, baby. Hi there. Welcome to the Bellied Up podcast. Who are we chit chatting with? Hey, it's Kristen. How are you? Kristen. Kristen. We're doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Where are you from, Kristen? Where are you calling in from? Well, I'm calling in from Connecticut, actually. Okay. And but I but I am from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Well, well we happy, got a Uper. Yeah. It's, hey, a, happy National <laughs> Michigan <laughs> Day. <laughs> yeah. Do you know it's <laughs> National Michigan Day? I didn't know that. All I know is that November 15th is the opening day of deer season, and it's a real big deal where I'm, well, where we're all from, I guess, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. School clothes and everything. And when I moved to the East Coast, everyone looked at me like I was crazy when I told them that. And and that I had to take hunter safety in order to graduate high school. They were like, what? <laughs> it's important to know how to hold I'm a like, shotgun. It's a real thing. Or yeah. a rifle. Well, you're really not important. you're not crazy. Okay. They're crazy, okay? I That's kind of what I'm like. I've been living on the East Coast, but I'm really a Midwest girl. And, you know, people think the, that, like, when I bring an appetizer to a party... They're like, what is this? And I'm like, it's youper sushi. It's like, you know, where, where you take the ham and then you put the cream cheese and the pickle and then you cut it? <laughs> yeah. Youper sushi. It's so good. You know what, Kristen? I'm almost, <laughs> yeah. I'm embarrassed to say I didn't know about that. Come on. I didn't know about it either. I mean, I am it just. It sounds delicious. It, I've had it. I've had it. I just it's, didn't know that was the name. Yeah, it's. Can I tell you, nobody touched me. Like, it was the only thing that nobody touched. And I was like, I can't even believe that these people wouldn't even try it. I like, can't. don't yuck my yum. Don't yuck your yum. Yeah. Don't yuck my yum. I imagine. <laughs> oh, my God. That's a great phrase right there. I imagine at the end, she was like, fine. You guys don't get any anyways then. And she stormed off with the Uper Sushi. 
n- never to be seen again. And you know what? I ended up at the end of the night drunk eating the U for sushi all by myself. I mean, I was happy. Nobody touched it because, you know, you need something in your stomach before you go to bed after drinking all night. That is true. Absolutely. Something to soak it up. Yeah. Well, yeah. What, we, yeah. uh, why don't you belly up with us? What's on your mind? So the topic today is how in the good gravy do you really break up with someone when you don't want to hurt their feelings and they just never, ever, ever want to leave you. (laughs) This is a classic Midwest relationship problem, Kristen. I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah, don't. Are you dating the fella currently? No, and I haven't for a very long time. And and like it's just no one's really getting the memo because, you know, everyone where I live on the East Coast, they're cutthroat. They were like, just stop talking or whatever, right? But, you know, when people need something, you know, like a casserole or, you know, a ride or anything, I- I'm happy to do it for literally anybody. But, you know, I don't hate anybody. I I just, you know, they, it just keeps coming back. It's kind of like... <laughs> If I'm, I don't know. If I'm picking I up, if I'm picking up what you're putting down, Kristen, is that you've got this guy that you dated, perhaps, and this fella you are yeah. not interested in, but the fella knows he is he is taking advantage of your Midwest niceness and knows that you guys can still be quote unquote friends, and he's using this to his advantage to see you, but you are over it, and when he sees you and you are doing something nice for him, he kind of brings up the romantic feelings again in that interaction. Is this is this oh. accurate? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's it's yeah. Give us backstory. Tell us what his name is and where you met him. Kind of paint the picture for us. I had met I met him. Oh my gosh, three years ago, and I met him on a dating app. And Which one? I was actually in um, Hinge. Okay. And I was actually in Michigan, and on vacation in the summer. I'm a teacher, so I have all my summers off. And I obviously go back to Michigan. And there I am by good old Lake Superior. And he swipes me and I'm like, oh, this is great, right? And we start talking and he said, well, I'm going to go to a Yankee game this weekend. Do you want to come? And I said, well, I'm in Michigan. And he said, well, I'll buy you a flight. And of course, my grandma, he's like, Oh my God, honey, are you going to go to the big city on a date? What if something happens to you? I was like, well, <laughs> turns out <laughs> the, the game is really only 50 minutes from my house. It's, I'm not scared. I'll just take an Uber back home or hang out with my friend in the city. I don't care. Like, it's not like, you know, for my grandma, it's like big stuff. And so we hit it off. We had a really great time. And and then I guess my first red flag was um, we were walking to Grand Central and I was holding his hand and he said, well, I have to stop holding your hand now because what my wife might see it. And I was like, what? what? Oh. <laughs> and, uh, he's like, well, I'm technically married, and but I'm going through a divorce. Well, long story short, his divorce has taken him a real long time, like years. So I kind of like dissolved the relationship, started dating other people, which was really, really, really great. And then, you know, he just came out of nowhere and he love bombed me again. And he told me that he's divorced and all of these things. And then I broke another man's heart because I was like, oh, I went back to him thinking everything was going to be great and fine. And turns out it's just the same old stuff. And, you know, it's like I love the guy to death, like as a human, right? Like as a friend, but like as a boyfriend, no. And so, and I don't know, it's just very complicated because he's like always right there. Yeah. Wherever I go. Okay. So you're wondering how to really just break it off with them. Mm-hmm. Okay. I got one yeah. we can throw out there. We can spitball a little bit, Charlie, but I'll throw the first one here. Do you want to role play it? Do you want her to be him or me to be him and you to be her? Yeah, let's okay. do that. All right. Who do you want to be uh, him? You want me or her you, to be him? You're him. Okay. All right. 
Um, Hi. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> oh, I just wanted to tell you, I love, I was thinking about today in my journaling, my morning journaling session, and I was just writing, um, I was just trying to write from the heart, mm -hmm. and all I was mm -hmm. writing was just imagining waking up, the sun glistening over the Hudson River and just seeing it sparkle in your eyes mm -hmm. as they lightly open and you look over at me and I tell you, I love you, Kristen. Well, um, thank you for that. You're welcome. That was really, really sweet. Um, say, uh, I love you, the way your butt looks in you, a bikini. You, uh, you shouldn't talk like that when we're in public here. I'm sorry. Because yeah. my husband might overhear you. You have a husband? That's perfect, Kristen. I have a wife. <laughs> Damn Maybe. It. Backfire. Don't do that one. <laughs> I was going to say you just throw it back at him, right? In the time, the last three years, you acquired a husband and you throw it back in his face a little bit. But you're right. That might not work out, Charlie, because he's already on board with that. Yeah, I think you could get more direct to the point, Kristen. Here, my turn to role play. You, yeah. I'll play Kristen. You play the guy. What's up, baby cakes? Um, I've got something I want to ask you. Yeah, go ahead. I just broke. I love you, by the way. That's fine. And I, you're hot. Okay, thank you. And I, you're my favorite person to go to the Stop Yankee. love bombing me. Seriously, stop it. If you really loved me, answer me this question. Are you still with your wife? Well, technically. Don't give me your mama's balls. Don't give me that. Technically. It's terrible. Don't We're talk done. about my mama's balls. We're, oh, well, don't be married and start talking to me we're done we're done see just throw a little your mama's balls and then we're 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 off the off the hook Kristen, what do you think about that i think it's, i think it's a good plan i mean i've i've utilized this strategy um and you know i actually want to take his wife apartment shopping this is like where i'm at i have this real problem i'm like i should help her find an apartment so wait they're, <laughs> they still are married it. they're not divorced well, they have been, it's the, it's the weirdest, longest divorce I've ever known in my life. And I feel real bad for her. I do. I feel really bad for her. How many dates have you been on like with I, this guy? I guess, lots. Several. Like, a, like a hundred? Like probably more. Yeah. Real, more than a hundred dates? Well, Kristen, at this well, point, you, know. you might be a little bit on the complicit side, you know? Yeah, I don't You've know. been dancing, every, dancing with the dragon. Every time you're pointing a finger, there's three <laughs> more pointed right back at you. Yeah. Back at me. Are you friends? <laughs> Are you friends with his wife? No. No, I'm not. Have you um, met her? I'm not friends with her. Um, no, not really. Like I've seen her and I've waved and I smiled and, um, you know, they live two separate lives and all of that. But, you know, I know that I think she's like nice and stuff. I, don't, I mean, not according to him, but yeah. according to other people. Yeah. So, I mean, at yeah. least though, like they're both cool with each other dating other people though. That's an important fact, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it's the, it's the divorce that never ends. Like, yeah, they, I mean, it's like three years, a three long, like three years long. Do they it's have like kids? The craziest thing. They do. Insta mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you like that's his? The, that's the biggest prop. I love his children. But, you know, I, I also, I love everybody's children, really. I'm a teacher. I would, I'd take them all home with me if I could. Well, don't do that. You I might love, have the I cops love, showing up to your house. I would recommend not taking everyone's kids home. Kristen, when was the last <laughs> time you would say you were exclusive with this fella? Oh, uh, long time ago, like months. Months ago. Are you dating anyone else now? No. 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 So you still got some <laughs> lingering feelings for this guy. I'm starting to get the sense this isn't just... Hey, you're being Midwest nice. I think um, that you kind of... No, in terms of the actual relationship, that ship has it's failed a it's very failed. long time ago. I realized that it's like it's failed. It's 
far. It's gone. You can't even see it in the sunset. It's, okay. I mean, I care about him on the human level, right? And yeah. so he's just in constant crisis, and he utilizes that, you know, as yeah. an opportunity yeah. to get my attention. Mm-hmm. Like, he'll make up fake emergencies. Fake emergencies. Yeah. Well, I... Th- like, th- are, are, you, fake emergencies. are you a little codependent with the fella, you think? No. Okay. No, okay. I'm actually the opposite. I'm hyper independent. Okay. So I, I don't. Yeah, I'm hyper independent. Well, Charlie, I think a, he would like me to be codependent. Charlie, I want you to think in your mind. You got uh, your, you got a cornhole partner that yeah. you play cornhole with. Good guy, mm-hmm. right? And, uh, you know, he just is kind of losing his fastball a little bit. Maybe not hitting the hole as much as you'd like him to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How would you go about breaking up with that cornhole partner? And maybe she can use the same tactics. You know, I, I, I would just say, um, how are we supposed to be partners when every tournament you're playing against me? You know? <laughs> that's actually kind of a good line. Yeah. 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 There you go. That's uh, really good. How about that? That's some good material. What's the I cr- like that, Charlie. What let me ask you, Christian, what is the craziest thing he has asked for your help in? <laughs> good. She's laughing. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, literally he was like he one time he was just like, there's an emergency. There's an emergency. I, I need you to, like, do something with my kids. And I was like, what? What's the emergency? What needs to be done? And there was, it was like a fake emergency. And I was like, I don't understand what's happening. What, I actually don't understand what you need from me. Or there was another time I was teaching. And um, <laughs> I opened the door to my school. And there he was with a white flag, a makeshift white flag with like his big apology in front. And like my students were like, this woman, who is that? And I'm like, I don't know. This is oh very God. creepy. This is Why? like, you ever seen the show? You? Wait. Yeah, this is like you. You ever see that show? The stalker. Do you think he's stalking you? I don't think so. Do you I think he's know. listening like, to us right now? I, Maybe he's got your phone. One time, um, one time I opened my door and there was like twelve orchids, not just like one, like twelve of them. I was like, like full blown orchids, like the big ones. I was like, what the? And yeah, I mean, there's been, there's been like, you know, he just. He just, you know, I don't know. So he I think he's not. I think the him. problem here is, is that you're always leaving the door open, responding to his messages. I think if there's an emergency, you kind of just need to be okay with the fact that someone else has got to deal with his emergency. Maybe his wife. Not your monkey, not your circus. Exactly. And uh, so oh, I would even. You know, I say that all the time. Well, yeah. you got to yeah. start living it. Yeah. Though. Practice what you preach yeah, a little bit here. So I think you got to block him. Mm-hmm. And uh, if he sends you stuff in the mail, just send it right back. Don't accept it. And then uh, over time, I think you'll get the hint. Maybe not because he sounds a little stalkerish, but uh, that's maybe a first step. What'd you say, Charlie? I'd say so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What does he do for a living, by the way? Yeah. He does. He sells stuff like corporate. Oh. Boring, boring, boring. <laughs> All right. I, I know. I like people are always like, "Well, who was it you to?" I was like, "Well, I dated this one guy that worked in a junkyard in Michigan, and it's like then I dated a guy that pumps gas. That's how I met him. He pumped my gas in Jersey, and then <laughs> no, <laughs> no, in Michigan. Like the guys I dated in Michigan were so different. Like it, like Wait. I used to be able to work in a junkyard it was so fun i would drive the big semis and like the big magnet i'd take a car and you know with the big magnet and put it in a crusher it was so fun yeah, wait were I, you working I, there or did your boyfriend just let you do that no my so one of my old boyfriends 
they owned a junkyard. Yeah. It was so fun. It was like so I, I could drive semis and stuff. That's go date that guy. Yeah, again. I would say I think the real real solution here, Charlie. You got to move back. Move back. They got Come schools in Michigan. Nothing. It's National Michigan Day. There's no other sign in the universe. You know us, Charlie. We're into Toro cards now. Yeah. We are all about we are Toro the readers. destiny. The, it's, it's written in the cards, as they say. It's in the cards. And I think it's in the cards for you to move back to Michigan. Done here, here. deal. Sell your place. Move on back. Kristen, we're happy to help you. Thank you. Yeah. I, I plan on moving back home, actually. Now's mm-hmm. the time, baby. I mean, not anytime soon, but. <laughs> no, now's the time. Go back I to know. the junkyard. I know. You can take the girl out of the youp, but you can't take the youp out of the girl. I love oh, it. Put that yeah. on a shirt, Charlie. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Well, we appreciate you calling in. Good luck with your stalker. And uh, we'll see you in Michigan sometime soon. Yeah. We'll bring that uh, Uper you Sushi. Betcha. All right. Yeah, real good. <laughs> I will. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye, yep. Kristen. Great gal. Don't yuck my yum. Ah, she's great. Tough situation, man. I know. Yeah. You can see why that married fellow really took a, a liking to her. You know? Yeah, it's a great gal. Incredible. Should we take another caller? Let's do it. Welcome to the Belly Up Podcast. Who are we talking yeah. to? Hey, what's going on, guys? Because I'm to uh, Raymond. Raymond? Yes. How are you guys? Good. How are you doing, Raymond? Uh, Can you hear me? We, yeah. Good, where, good. Where, where are you calling in from, my guy? I'm calling from Melbourne, Florida. I actually talked to you guys about probably uh, uh, happy, a year and a half ago or so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What were we talking about? Last time we were talking about, um, I was looking for a grill, and you guys were giving me advice on grill. Uh, yes. I don't remember. Yeah. Now I recall. Good, good to have you back at the bar, <laughs> Raymond. Belly on up and uh, <clears throat> tell us what's on your mind this time. Uh, well, I just wanted some advice. The uh, the old bowling chain is actually doing a year of internship up in uh, Upstate New York, close to Lake Ontario. Yeah. So you know, since living in Florida, we never actually get close enough to the point of actually frozen lakes or frozen water. Thank you. So, you know, she's up there for the winter. So looking for some advice on some, uh, I want to try ice fishing for the first time. So yes. I want to see if you guys have some advice for me. Oh, we've okay. got some advice, man. Excited for you. You got to be stoked because this is, this is a, uh, a beautiful tradition in the Midwest and in the upper points of the East coast. So, yeah. Um, well, Charlie, why don't you start off with what are the three things every newbie to ice fishing should know about? Three things are this. First and foremost, you got to wear very, very warm clothes. OK, it's going to get cold out there. You're going to be okay. dealing with the elements and the wind. And the nice thing about the big clothes you're going to be wearing, a lot of pockets. And in those pockets, yeah. you're going to be putting some beers, some tippy cow. A little something to keep you uh, keep you going, okay? Because most of ice fishing is sitting there looking at the ice. And uh, there's nothing that makes uh, an ice hole more interesting than a nice cold one, all right? So don't go out there empty-handed, all right? Okay. Next tip, Miles. I'll bring a, I'll bring a 30 rack of a bush light. I mean, what right, Miles? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you better. <laughs> What's nice is nature is your fridge out there, too. You just slap those babies in the snow and they're ice cold. Mm-hmm. Miles, what's your next yeah. piece? Also, of I, have, I know that I know you guys make the sometimes make those videos of the ice fishing, but I don't think, uh, you know, for the first time, I don't think I want to drive a vehicle in there. So I'm probably just going to go and, you know, walk a couple a couple hundred yards from the shore, but not too far in, you know? Okay, so you're going to go bucket style. You're going to bring a bucket out there, sit on down, and drop your line in. Is that what the plan is? Yeah, I, I think so, yeah. Uh, look up the ice report, too. Now, when you're ice fishing on the Great Lakes, you got to remember this, that the ice is a little bit different historically than what it has been. There's a lot of wind. There's warmer water. Winter comes later in the year, and there is the chance that your ice sheet will break off 
And then you'll go on. You're no longer uh, ice fishing on some solid ice. You're now in a boat. OK, so if you can bring yourself a little outboard engine to steer that ice back to solid land, that would be a good thing to do. Yeah, you're no longer ice fishing. Like you're now island in, fishing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like those couple guys last year, what was it, Michigan? Yeah. It, the guys broke off and they were out there for a couple of weeks, yeah. Yeah, it happens every year, man. The Bay of Green Bay, you know? So especially your first time out and on the, uh, if you're on a big body of water, you want to make sure you know the ice report and don't bring anything out there that you're you're too precious with unless you're bringing an outboard engine then you drill a hole if you break off you stick that outboard on that and just piece steer, of right ice, into steer right in yeah it's great second advice Charlie. Okay, good yeah um and then uh third miles you want to take yeah i would say you're gonna want a really long extension cord and you're gonna want to bring a pizza oven out there with some frozen pizzas Cause you're going to get hungry and you want to have to be walking back and forth to the <laughs> truck. Just get that extension cord, roll it on out there, cook up some pizzas. You're probably going to have some fellow fishermen that one. are going to get a waft of that beautiful pizza. <laughs> then it's a great way to make new friends while you're out there too. Very good. Just don't drop, uh, yeah. don't drop that pizza oven into the water. Otherwise you're going to kill your new friends. But a lot of fish will come floating to the top. So, you know, whoever survives. Okay, good. It's kind yeah. of a give and take. In yeah, that. yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, if anything, I just go on Facebook Marketplace and trying to find a $1,000 um, ice fishing castle, hopefully with no mold, and, you know, take it out there. <laughs> yeah. Right, Miles? Yeah, that seems like a very specific example. What uh, <laughs> yeah. did you hear Miles, about that? Do you, do you know anyone with a moldy ice castle? Well, Miles? we actually just took it to the dump. So R.I.P. Big Blue. Wait. So we bought uh, <laughs> we bought a thousand dollar old camper that was converted into an ice house. So literally, they just drilled holes in the floor of the camper. Beautiful. It was great. It was painted blue on the outside. And it was awesome because we got it in the winter. We took it out in the winter. We caught some fish, drank a lot, all that. And then we were going to make some improvements to it. We brought it inside and everything started melting. And we found out that it was just littered with mold. They just and all of a sudden, over it. yeah, the smell started coming in. And it basically should have been shut down by some sort of toxic waste place. So uh, we had to retire it. No, Wait. no one should be in that thing. You did the right thing. Now, what you can do to avoid that is you can get what they call a tuber. And my buddy Larry Smith, he's a fishing guide on Lake Winnebago. Good guy. Look him up okay. if you're looking to go ice fishing in Wisconsin this year. But he's got himself an old, I want to say it's a, a suburban. And basically what you just do is you drill two holes in the bottom of that similar to your ice castle and then you can just drive out on the ice parker put a little tube extension into the ice and just fish from the back of uh your automobile okay well as long as i don't hit the uh the gas tank i think we'll be fine yeah you do want to make sure you know where you're drilling <laughs> yeah don't you drill know? through that that'd be bad yeah yeah i mean <laughs> You know, it's it's honestly, I, I think a sawzall job. Real well, I don't know what I, I've never done it, so I don't know what you would use. But get an old one because it's easier to understand the mechanics. Those and definitely don't do it with an yeah, electric well, that, deal. Yeah. You'll drill right through the battery. <laughs> yeah, that trouble. that will be bad. Yeah. So but yeah. Also, I mean, you know, since since the old bowling chain is up there, I'm I'm going and visiting her from you know from Florida the last couple of months. I was actually just up there last this past weekend. We came, we went to see some family, and then we back. We got back up there on Sunday. The temperature dropped from fifty something on Friday to below thirty five Sunday night. So we got out of the car, and it was just it was a shock. And you know, and I, every time I just remember, like it's not it's not the, it's not the cold that gets you the wind. Yeah, yeah. It's true. <laughs> You can really feel that, it. <laughs> well, and that's my second advice. If you're going to be sitting on a bucket out there, you're not going to be used to that wind out there. So you might want to invest in a pop-up. 
Nice pop Some up would be good. The, pop up, yeah. the other thing with the pop up is they right. pop down, and that's when you can drag all your stuff on it. Yep. So you put your pockets. also. I'm not going to let you skate by the fact you said that 35 degrees is cold. Yeah, that's it's, it's, it's going to get a lot colder. <laughs> You're not in Florida anymore, Raymond. <laughs> It's uh, where well, we're at remember, right now. It's 43, and I came in in a t-shirt and jeans. So and he was sweating. Oh God! Yeah. Are you guys in Wisconsin or in uh, North Dakota? We're in Minnesota right now, but damn near North Dakota. So oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Well, yeah. No, I mean you gotta remember. You when I landed back on Monday, it was 80 degrees out of the airport. Yeah. Whatever. So man. everybody that came out of that plane from up in New York was wearing a big hoodie or a big jacket and jeans and then you get out in the parking lot and it just you started to sweat and everything but yeah good yeah i know it compared to what it is i know that the temperature can get um can get lower but it's definitely the wind uh, you know it's definitely the wind that will get you yeah yeah oh. one, one other piece of advice make sure you don't drop your phone in the hole that yeah. would be tough you know you forget it's sitting on your lap and then you I stand up remember to not, I'll remember to not lock my keys out of the car, so I think I have to have somebody, you know, wait for a triple A to come unlock my car, right, Charlie? Yeah. <laughs> wow. This guy is well versed in our antics. Well versed. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That was uh, a deep cut. That yeah. is. I feel like that was on you Betcha's <laughs> podcast. Um So uh do you have any questions for us as a first time ice fisher? I think it was just, you know, the the waiting time, how long, you know, until what time do you, from what time do you get there until what time if you don't catch anything? You're like, okay, it may be time to to head back if I'm not catching anything. Well, you're always catching beers, so you can just stay out there until your toes get cold. And by the way, you should bring some hand warmers and stick them in your boots and don't tie your boots too tight. You need all the circulation you can get flowing through your feet. A lot of people make the mistake of tying their boots too tight and they can't feel their feet. You got to let some air, you know, let them feet breathe and then put uh, hand warmers on the top of your toes. Okay. Also, good. if you I don't know if there is there, but it, yeah, go ahead. Okay. You should you should get these spikes. There is it's a spike necklace you can wear. It's got two little hand spikes on them. And if you fall through the drink, okay, don't freak out. Breathe. All right. You're going to be at the point of hypothermia and then pull out those two spikes and just spread them out far as far as your arms can go and just kind of pull yourself up and spread your weight around the ice and kind of roll back on the ice like a big old seal. All right. Don't laugh at me, oh, Miles. Okay. You ever <laughs> fallen through the? This could save Raymond's <laughs> life here. I'm laughing because it was a it was a funny example. Yeah, you know, you just, pretty oh. specific. Well, if you fall through the drink, good, good. you got to know that. You know, we just saved a life here on the belly. Make sure podcast. the ice is thick enough too. That's another thing. Yeah, it's thick enough. I, I don't know. I'm not. I don't want to go uh, ice fishing in three inches of ice like the guy from Utah last week. Yeah, don't do that. Uh, the first time going out in three. <laughs> Yeah, give her give her at least six I was asking, yeah. six inches. I'd say six for inches. you, just to be safe on that big old body of water. I don't know, man. That's a lot. That's six inches a lot, but I'll I'll wait on it. <laughs> 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 you were you were you were making the comment about the boots. I was asking if Jerry was there because then I'm just gonna show up on. On Crocs or flip flops, like he did last year, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. ah, Jared's right Jared, here. Jared, what do you think of that? I've I've upgraded since. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I've yeah, learned from okay. my mistakes. <laughs> yeah, Jared just rolled up to ice fishing in flip flops. <laughs> that's not flip. That's not were they Crocs though? <laughs> they were just shitty boots from Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right, man. Well, this has been great. Great talking to you again, and good luck ice fishing. Yeah, that's going to be fun. And uh, make sure you Thanks, stay guys. warm out there. Yeah, do it indeed, and we'll, Thank you. we'll talk. I did, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I, have, I did have one more question before you, before I let you guys go. Yeah. I, when you guys first started the podcast, you guys made a table that you know <laughs> it was it was always that <laughs> that it took four hours to make the table, and then 
after like episode one or two, we never saw that table. Uh, thanks for Where, bringing it up. Now? Raymond, let's get your address. We're going to send you some merch. And the, we're going to the, send him the table. We're going to send you the table. <laughs> uh, no, it's still at my office. It just. We pivoted. We that's pivoted. A, that's a from classic that. pivot move by we, us. We figured, why are we well, making here. a bar when there's so many great bars around the Midwest that we can just go in and not have okay. to look I just, at our... Every time that, you know, <laughs> and you guys, I've been trying to quit work and all that. Sometimes it's kind of hard to talk, but every time I listen to the podcast and you guys are at a different bar, I'm like, I wonder what happened with that table that took four hours and couple trips down to food farm to bill yeah, yeah. yeah. i'm gonna an answer now can okay, if i die tomorrow i'll die you know i'll die comfortably knowing that <laughs> the table is still is still alive <laughs> And to be honest, it probably was longer than four hours, too, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. that was four hours of filming. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Footage. Yeah, I'll, yeah. Always look at the bottom of a piece of wood you buy. See if they pre-screwed your screw holes. Oh, God, that was dumb. Yeah, that was really oh, dumb. Okay, good. <sighs> Can't take us anywhere. Well, thanks for calling in, man. Good talking to you again. No, thank you, guys. Of course. Thank you for taking the call. All right. Have see you, Raymond. One. Great guy. Real good guy. Second time caller. Always has great insight, great inquisitive questions. Um, remembers everything. He's a steel trap. He knows. I, I imagine when he's going to go out on the ice for the first time, he's going to do the classic, like, really softly step yeah. as if that's going to matter at all. Yeah. It's gonna be, I wish I could be there for that. It's funny. Maybe we can. And then the first time the ice cracks around, like, boing, boing, boing. Yeah. yeah. Should we take another caller? Let's do it. Folks, you know what today is? Today is National Michigan Day, and I'm telling all my Michigan friends out there, I honor you. I salute you. Today, I tip my glass of tippy cow, and I say today and today only, you are the rightful owners of the UP. Wow, that was big of you to say. It, it expires at midnight, but until then, tip it on back with a tippy cow. Oh, nothing like... Uh, What's breaking bread? Uh, nothing like tipping tippy cow. It's, it's with, the olive with branch. Frenemies, you know yeah. what I mean? I'm extending the plate of cheese curds to uh, Michigan right now. Yeah, essentially, yeah. this is just a glass of cheese curds if it you is. really think cheese about it. Cheese curds in a glass. So tippy cheers, cow. Michigan. Cheers, Michigan. Cheers to the UP. Cheers to the UPers. Moo. Tippy cow. Moo. DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL playoffs, is bringing you an offer that will help make the playoffs electrifying. New customers can bet 5 bucks on any game and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Jared, we got some lines this week. What are they? Yep, we got Green Bay plus 9.5 against San Francisco. And Detroit minus six against Tampa Bay. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the code bellied up. New customers can bet just five bucks to get 200 instantly in bonus bets only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code bellied up. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash football for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who are we talking to? This is Will. Hey, Will. Will. Where are you calling in from? Uh, calling in from Indianapolis, Indiana. Ah, the great state of Indiana. Well, belly on up to the bar with us, Will. Tell us what's on your mind. So my wife and I, we're, uh, we're actually expecting our first child. Congratulations. Um, a little boy. Nice. Thank That's... you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> appreciate it. And, uh, Growing up, I was into sports. Everybody was into sports. Uh, Miles, I know you were a football player and everything. And I'd like to eventually get him into, uh, you know, thinking five years ahead of where we actually are, but getting him into youth sports. And there's always this debate about whether you should be a youth sport parent or you should be a youth sport coach. Okay. And how involved you should get into that. Okay. So you're one. And I just didn't know if you all had any. Yeah, go ahead. 
Well, so you're wondering if you should make the leap and fully commit and be be a coach as well. Yeah, so it, you know, it always kind of goes back and forth. You can you can see it both ways, and it's you know, it, I don't want to do anything that can negatively uh, uh, upset the relationship that I have with him and everything. You can kind of go too far with that type of stuff. I just didn't know if y'all had any thoughts on that. Yeah. So, what sport are you thinking this kid's gonna play? If I had it my way, I'd probably say baseball. I was a baseball guy growing up, you know, doing the little t-ball stuff. And, yeah. Uh, I thought you were maybe going to say wrestling. I'd say, I don't know about that. It's kind of a cock sandwich of a sport. So. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, well, I'm originally from Kentucky, so maybe we'll do uh, do basketball, too. So it just just depends on what he's interested in. Uh, <laughs> Miles, what did you say about wrestling? It's kind of a cock sandwich of a sport. You uh, know? That's such a weird thing to say yeah, about wrestling. Just came I feel like you're just, just came out forcing it a little on that one. Oh, no, yeah. You know, uh, this guy's got his, his first, he's bringing his first baby boy into the world. And uh, I, I mean, you might as well just said, your mama's balls, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no sense. He has no idea what time out. Unbelievable. Okay, That's so baseball. Um, I mean, baseball's got to be the easiest sport to coach on planet Earth. I think that's the thing to remember here. It's a lot of keep your eye on the ball, and that's it. Depends if they're batting, keep the eye on the ball. If they're trying to catch a pop fly, keep your eye on the ball. That's it. So I don't know. It doesn't sound too hard. What do you think? I mean, I I kind of wonder, like, what year do you want to start being a coach? Like, because for the first, like, I would say until probably third, fourth grade, you're just babysitting, you know? <laughs> so, like, do you want to sign up yeah. to be a babysitter or do you want to sign up to develop some young men's baseball skills? No, nah, see, I've... I've that's a good point. Now I'd, I'd like to kind of get involved whenever it gets a little more competitive, say, uh, you know, like little league or something like that. So did you say you played baseball as well? I did. Yeah. I played all the way up to high school and then focused on studies after that. Do I wasn't, you, I wasn't good enough. <laughs> okay. Do you regret? That's a classic. I got cut from the team. So no, I didn't get cut. I just decided to focus on studies. Well, here's exactly. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but here's the real question. Do you have regrets? Are you going to be trying to live out your childhood yeah, dreams through point. your boy? Oh, man. We're getting all psychological now. Aren't yeah, we, <laughs> we got to get to the root of why you may want to be a coach. Yeah, and we got to figure out that's if what it is. your intentions are pure. If they're not, you know, you're going to be creating a whole hell storm for all these kids. So we got to figure it out. Do you think you got a little bit that you want to live through the kid or no? It's not necessarily anything that I want to see him, you know, achieve. It's just I had such good memories that that I'd like to see him go through something similar. You know what I'm saying? Like it brought me a lot of joy, and it, and if it's it, if it's something that he's interested in, I'd like to see him kind of have some of the same memories that that I had growing up because it was kind of a big part of my childhood and. You know, I met a lot of my friends through baseball and, you know, it's just, just kind of a big part of who I was growing up. So. Yeah. You're saying all the right things here. I think you're great coach material. Now, now if he would have said, well, yeah, I want my kid to win. Yeah. Then maybe we got to walk it back a little bit because <laughs> well, that's when it starts getting crazy. Why don't we role play right now? Yeah. Why don't we do a little role play? All right. You're the coach and I'm, I'm the kid. We're both, we're both the players. We're both the players. We're both the players. You're the coach. Um, hey coach, okay. hey coach, you want to hear a joke? Yeah, sure, lay it on me. All right. Uh, okay. What are wh you doing? The this is a good one. Are it's a good it? one. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Okay, coach, <laughs> coach, <laughs> stop it, dude. Sorry, sorry. stop it. One. So, coach, uh, <laughs> uh so. If you go to Chick Fil A, <laughs> what are you eating? <laughs> if you go to Chick Fil A, where are you Wait, eating? Isn't it, your, isn't it your turn to bat? What the hell are you doing in the dugout? <laughs> what, Coach? Uh, what, what, are you, 
What are you trying to tell jokes now? Like, Coach. It's your turn to bat. Get a bat and let's go. Come on, Coach. <laughs> just answer the Come joke. Come on, Coach. You're not making baseball any fun right yeah, now. Yeah, just make it fun and I'll get the bat. All right. All right. So, what, 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 what do I what do I eat? What do I eat at Chick Fil A? I don't know. I'm asking you, Coach. <laughs> I got a chicken sandwich. No, you have a cock sandwich. <laughs> uh, coach, you're not gonna tell my mom I said that, are you? Ah, uh, well. I guess we'll see when she gets here. No, oh, Coach. No, coach, we didn't mean we saw we it kidding. on a podcast. Yeah. There was a couple of idiots that were at the bar. I'm sorry, and, Coach. Yeah. Coach, I'll I'll confess it at church. Please don't tell my mom. Please don't tell my mom. Coach, can you promise me you're not going to tell my mom? I'll hit a home run. All right. If you hit a home run, then, then nothing's going to be said. All right. But Go hit a home run, run, dude. Okay. Keep your eye on the ball. I it's Coach, Keep I have a... Keep your eye on the ball. Uh, coach, I have a hard time. I feel like it, I'm scared of the ball. <laughs> well, why are you scared of the ball? Well, because it, 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 it hurts. It hurts. It's hard baseball. Well, I mean, that's part of the game. Rub a little dirt on it and move on. <laughs> Coach, what if I get it? it do, do these? My cl- mom says that there's a lot of germs in dirt, though. Uh, you don't have to listen to that part of it. Okay, I'll tell my mom that Good you said I shouldn't have to listen to her. <laughs> oh no! Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> See, man, this is what you're going to be dealing with if you're going to be coaching I know, kids. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know. I don't know. I I feel like I'm not a very confrontational person. So I, you know, it, that that's the one thing too that everyone has to deal with on the side is that you have so many parents that get involved. That is a great all point. that, and you're, you know, that's that's always. Seeing that from where I was, you know, I didn't have to see the behind the scenes per se being a kid, but that's the other side of it that just, you know, would make me nervous about taking that on. It just seems like there's a lot more there than what you want to deal with. Parent politics is what I think they call it. Yeah, there's like always the parents sitting there like thinking he's the coach. There's the parent who's just yelling at the umpire, the parent who's keeping score. How would you deal with a parent who thinks that their son or daughter should be getting more playing time, but they their kid sucks. Role you, play. Yeah. Role play. Coach, you're not putting Billy in. Why not? Why is he sitting on the bench? Well, Billy doesn't deserve the amount of playing time that others have. He, he puts in the time, but he's just not there compared to other kids on the team. Well, do you think he's going to get there sitting on the bench? He's got to get some some playing time, coach. What I mean, what do you think they're going to win the World Series? And your kid gets a lot of time. I think- <laughs> Is that preferential treatment? <laughs> I tell if Billy continues to put in the time and effort that he needs to to get to where he needs to be, then he will show the results will show up with playing time Honey, on the field. Tell him that he has been putting in the work. Tell him. Shh, shh, tell him. I, t- remind him how much we paid to have I, him sign okay, up. Okay, okay, honey. I did not pay him honey, to sit on the bench. Honey, I will get there. Coach, why can't he get in the game more? Huh? We pay a lot of money for this. We're paying your salary, coach. What salary? Your salary. You're not getting paid? Oh, well, what are all these dues going for? Well, huh? it's starting to show that he doesn't get paid because he's not very good at honey, this. I, will, I wouldn't honey, even pay him a dollar. Stop this. I will handle this. I will handle this. I am the man of this house, okay? Coach, please, can you just put him in for like three minutes? I honestly, I'll pay you $1,000. Charlie, Charlie. I'm just trying to get laid, man. Yeah, I'm just trying to get some. It's been like two years, coach. I'm trying to I'm trying to make another Billy, okay? And all right. Yeah, this it, kid's spoiled rotten. He's a spoil. You can be honest with me. He's a spoiled little shit, and he's a smart ass. And he he told you the joke about the cock sandwich, didn't he? <laughs> I I knew it. I told Dang you. it. Well, I tell, Bastard. Well, I, well, I tell. How about this? How about this? So I'll, uh, how about I put in some extra time with Billy? I come and pick him up, you know, on a Saturday and him and my boy, we can go out and we can put in some extra time and that way we can kind of kill two birds with one stone, if you know what I'm saying. Well, 
But, but, but that would be really. He's sh- got piano on on the weekend. <laughs> the kid. He's got his piano he, lessons. He doesn't. Who cares about piano? Can't he just stick him in right field? What the hell is he playing? Yeah. Can, can coach? Can he just be in right field? No one ever hits the ball out there. <laughs> <laughs> then the next oh. game, they're playing a team called the Lefties. And they're, all, exactly. they're, all, they're all left-handed batters. <laughs> exactly. They're pulling the hell out of it out there. And they get bombarded with it. <laughs> Just getting peppered in right field. Yeah. Uh, I got a question for yeah. you. When, when do you, do, like, in high school, are you still wearing a cup? Like, I I just remembered, like... No, what age do you start wearing a cup? Well, you know? no, I was wearing a cup very early on. It was the most uncomfortable thing. Are they... Has the cup technology gotten better since I was playing baseball? Oh, I, I doubt it. The last time I played was 2013. So it's... But but then, I, I, was, I mean, I did play catcher for a while, and it was uncomfortable as hell, man. It, it was awful. So I, I I doubt it's gotten any better. So do like normal baseball players wear cups? Like do the pros wear cups? I'd say the catchers do. I don't know about everyone else. The kind of when whenever we got to a point, they kind of just left it up to us to how uh, how protected we wanted to be. Yeah, because I'm looking at these baseball players now, and I'm looking at their uh, junk, and I'm not seeing a cup there. <laughs> You know, and I'm always thinking about because yeah. they throw some hard balls, yeah. man. And, well, and honestly, that was my really. that was my problem. I was shortstop. I was always like I had like this delayed reaction time because I always need to be like, all right, this isn't coming toward my junk. And my <laughs> my glove would be over my my junk because I wasn't wearing a cup because I couldn't do anything. Yeah, I couldn't well, run. And, and, <laughs> you're right. Because it's always jabbing into the sides of your legs. Yeah. And, stuff, and, then, and then, then sometimes you get a ball between the cup yeah. and your leg and you're and squeezing the, your ball. Next thing you know, you're thinking about your cock sandwich between your legs <laughs> and not about the ball coming at you. You know, Miles, the, the cock sandwich thing is a little sophomore. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> tell you that right now uh, <laughs> well man i i think you just gotta I, I think you got the right attitude for it i think you can go ahead and give it the green light be a coach you seem like you got it together yeah if you could handle us you know you can handle a, a team well that sounds good i'll, I'll have to get come to some of my buddies and we'll just have to pull something together here in a few years but, i like uh, it no i do appreciate it i just want to say that I, I really enjoy your all's podcast too. Y'all crack me up all the time. I, I just recently found you, but y'all, y'all are great, man. I, oh. I appreciate y'all taking my call. Well, thank yeah, you, sure, man. and thank congrats you. to you and your wife. All right, that's very exciting. All righty, all right. Watch for deer. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate. It. Yep. Watch out for thank fly you. balls as well. I said hi. I will. I will. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Now. All righty. See y'all. Bye bye. That was some of our better role playing. Charlie. That was and pretty I, so good. Like, we're yeah. kind of good. We're kind of good eight year olds. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah, uh, your for your first cock sandwich was very forced. No. Yeah. Wrestling is a cock sandwich sport. Is it? You got Jared, two, two what's guys. the ruling? Jared, who wins on the the? Yeah, who's okay? Who's paying the tab? Forget who, who pays a better your one. Salary. I had great follow ups as well. I think Miles won. Let's go. Bums. Charlie will take the tab over here, guys. That's, that's, it's just the mama's balls thing was a little forced at the beginning. Well, it's it a, is a harder really one hard to get one in to there. Do. True, true. <laughs> harder one to get in there. Well, Charlie, that was fun. It was fun. Another beautiful episode of the Bellied Up Podcast and in the books. That wraps it up here at the old mix office. Yeah. Time to go home from work. Time to go home. We put in a hard day at the office here. Hell yeah. Well, guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Bellied Up Podcast. Charlie. Watch for deer and tip your bartender. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.